Let's talk about investment. This is something that honestly is like blown way out of proportion in this game. And there's only really one unit that I would say that could be considered high investment, but even then it's not like a ton. And I think that's Jean, like just getting him to level up. But this is a Jean that just healed and chain guarded. And he's level six on chapter eight. And here is an Anna that just used Micaiah right after her paralogue on the previous chapter. I didn't do any XP farming. She just healed and then used Great Sack when it was available. And she's level eight, easily could hit level 10 by the end of this and then eventually become a Mage Knight. So these are units that are typically labeled as high investment. Jean can be used as a staff bot throughout the entire game for literally zero investment. And it's he's just a free chain guarding staff bot and Anna can just be a Makaya user. Now, If so if you want to level up Anna quickly, like without farming, without exploiting the game, you can just hand her Makaya and she can just become a healer that can sometimes deal chip damage and also contribute as a backup early game. And she will get online as early as chapter seven, potentially chapter eight. Like this is generally when she hits level 10 and at which point you can master seal and second seal her at the end of chapter eight and she can become a sage, she can become a mage knight, you can make her a griffin, and then she can start popping off and one rounding things. Like pretty like pretty much immediately. So this this idea that there's this like high level of investment to getting her online, I think is like a myth. And I've I've had weird counter arguments like, oh well she's getting an emblem ring and those are a scarce resource. It's like you're not taking more than three things out of the early game. I don't I don't know how people are playing this game on Maddening, but generally you take like three to four early game units with you and then drop the rest, you bench the rest. Because there's so many good middle game units, it's a waste to divert all this SP and XP into units you don't plan on using long term. And of the early game units, Anna is not a bad unit. If you give her an engraved uh, Well Axe, an engraved Hero Axe, an engraved Compact Axe, she can consistently clean up damage and kills and kill enemies that are at like half health, which is like most early game units. Very few early game units are one rounding unless they're an over invested in Alir, an over invested in Chloe, a second sealed Lapis on Wyvern, uh, maybe a second sealed Citrine to some degree. She might be able to one shot with like momentum. So like there's, there's not very many good, there's like no good, there's no free early game builds, right? I wanted, I wanted to dispel this myth that handing someone an emblem ring is favoritism instead of just saying okay there's like 30 units in this game i can't use all of them here's the units i'm going to use these units are getting emblem rings this is how this should be viewed it's completely irrational to assume that you're not going to hand the units you plan on using emblem rings when there's other emblems you don't plan on using so why would i give them an emblem ring it doesn't make any sense at all uh are these other units better than anna Maybe for a chapter, <laughs> maybe for like two to two, two, three chapters at the most. But all once she hits level ten, she blows Citrine out of the water. Like once she becomes a Mage Knight, uh, she she has slightly higher speed than Citrine early. I don't know if she has more build. Let's see, actually. So like if you so this is a level eight Anna. Once she hits level ten, she'll have a little bit more speed than Citrine. She has twenty percent more speed growth than Citrine. So every 10 level ups on fixed mode, she gets two more points of speed, which does matter a lot. That helps you reach break points faster. So six build, 13 speed from level eight. And then Citrine, I think she's also, okay, she's also six build. All right, so six build, 13 speed. So Citrine can have kind of similar results, uh, but Anna scales speed faster. She gets more dex. She has 50% magic dex and speed growth. So Citrine might have higher magic for like certain, maybe for like early game to some of middle game, but Anna eventually passes her, or at least at the very least gets even. But Anna also gets two points of speed per 10 level ups. And generally your units are like level 40 to 45 by end game. So you're looking at like six to seven more speed for free, like just for using her. And she has way better decks. But this notion that units are high investment because they need an emblem ring is silly because in early game you don't like let's just like play this map let's just like go through this right i'm, I'm all about proving things right I, I don't care about i don't care about theory when it's not tested so like if someone has a theory 
or like a hunch and they don't have evidence to back it up and they're just like making claims especially if they don't have tests to back it up you always have to be skeptical so like i can prove that chloe is good early game right like she can just go kill these she can open by killing two things. I can prove, look at it, you, you can't refute this. This is obviously good. This is better, this is probably like one of the best openings for this map, and then she can just go fight these. Uh, so like Alir, so here are the units that I'm carrying with me. Alir is going to be obviously used, uh, Chloe is gonna be used in this run, so they get emblem rings. Fram is gonna be used, so she gets an emblem ring for SP generation while she gets XP. Uh, Jean is gonna be a free utility. Saline is just here for you know, you know units for units. Same thing with Citrine, same thing with Alcris. Like these, some of these units aren't coming with me. If they're coming with me, they would get the emblem rings. It's really that simple. It's it's not very complicated. <laughs> so all right, so I can start putting units in here. It's like let's go have some dudes fight some stuff. So I can immediately great sack on Anna. She can probably get a level up from that. Have to start taking some damage, and from there. She'll just be a healer. So like she's not even like dead weight or something. Like she's a she's just a Micaiah healer. Now anyone can be a Micaiah healer, but she can also deal chip damage. She can also be a backup. The thing that's stupid though is she's only this use case. Like she's only this for like two chapters, and they're easy chapters in the early game. The early game is so easy that I don't even think it even if she was bad, even if she was straight up terrible, if I could get her to level 10 in two chapters in the early game and then she becomes like a hard carry late game, I would think it's still worth it. Because the early game is so easy, and mo a lot of units are trash in the early game, and they need like XP funneling, they need like weapons with engravings and forges. There's also another thing I noticed that like people will assume, like there's like, they'll just like assume that like this unit A gets forges and engravings, and then when they run that unit, though this unit's S tier and it has forges and engravings and an emblem ring, but then when unit B gets those exact same resources, all of a sudden it's a problem. And there's like this double standard where, you know, giving your units you plan on using resources is propping them up. But this is like this dumb old school mentality where there was like two speed wings in the game and then everyone just had like crazy, there were units just with crazy bases and growths and then there were people that just liked a unit. And that is not the case here. Like this, Anna, like after this chapter will be cracked immediately from early game to end game easily. And I can prove it too. I have a build. <laughs> All right, we can great sack. I should probably shouldn't great sack here though. All right, we got like two XP for that. <laughs> oh, cause no one took damage. That's why. Actually, I'll pulse that. Yeah, Amber didn't take that much damage. So what I could do is an alternate. She can just kind of get in here. She can just heal him. Yeah, you don't want a great sack unless a bunch of dudes are damaged. Funny enough, I got more XP from doing that. Alright, we're gonna have people take damage. Like, the early game is so easy, I actually need to, I, I actually need to let them damage me. I'm gonna let him hit me too. The more you heal, the more XP you get, so that's like the whole thing. Alright, and then <laughs> Chloe's just killing everything. <laughs> Dude, this is the early game. I don't know why people say this is, oh my god, she's not good in the early game. It's like, for like two chapters, and it doesn't even matter. Like, you can just have Chloe be insane and just kill everything for you if you want. And then you can also make Lapis a second Chloe and have two of them. <laughs> you can have two, alright? Don't be greedy. You don't need that many. All right, let me get some, let me make like a wall of people. Like I have a lot of units that are doing nothing right now. Like that's the early game. If you do your early game correctly, you should have units that are just like twiddling their thumbs with nothing to do. <laughs> like I just, like, you honestly have too many deploy slots in this game. You can just chain yard her for fun. All right, they're coming in hot. <laughs> Look at this. You just miss Chloe and then dies. She levels up. Some speed, you love to see it. Here we go. Dude, they're not even hitting us. I just don't understand how people can make claims that it's like overinvestment to give someone resources that everyone gets. Like you have to set, like I have to set up Chloe, like getting this Chloe, this Chloe isn't free. I had to feed her a bunch of kills. Like there's not, 
you, there's very rarely something that you just get for free. Like, you even you have to even min-max, like, Pandreo and Kagetsu. Like, nothing in this game is necessarily free. Everything needs some resource, everything needs some degree of min-maxing, and to blatantly ignore that for the sake of, like, making some argument about, like, unit quality is doing people a disservice because it's just not accurate, right? Like, I don't, I don't care about being right, I care about being correct. <laughs> so, like, that, what does that mean? I, I care about having the right information and being in line with what's true rather than being right and, like, proving people wrong. Like, I have no interest in, like, dunking on people. I just want to know what's true. And from what I've observed, Anna is easily a hard carry that doesn't take much to get going. And this is just one example. Like, there's other units. Like, people, some people... Some people love that love Gold Mary claim that Tamara is high investment. <laughs> but it's like Gold Mary is more investment to get her working. Like she's actually harder to get working easily. She needs like she needs speed wings if she wants to double consistently, even on speed taker. Alright, let's see if I can great sack her some XP here. There you go. Alright, she's almost level nine now. And then she can get another great sack from here. And then Jean can even get some XP off of this too. And this is just playing the game normally. I'm not like farming. I'm just like fighting enemies, letting them hit me. I'm actually letting them hit me to gain XP though, but still. Like in this situation, Lapis, Alchrist, Saline. Well, Saline just enemy phase, but Lapis, Alchrist, Amber, Citrine. They've done like literally nothing right now. <laughs> he counterattacked something that attacked him, but it's not like. He's not exactly killing it, you know? Here we go, set this up for me. Set up my set up my Fram kills. It's very important Fram gets kills. She is a combat unit after all. She's gonna be a utility, obviously, but you would do this though, like why wouldn't you? Why would you not mid-max and optimize your units? It's, it's just so, it's just so weird. All right, I can go here. And then she can just plus shape heal, look at this. This will be big XP as well. Heal, it hits three targets. Including herself. Four targets, never mind. And now she's already almost level 10. Like, I, I just don't understand how, like, how is this high investment? Like, she's literally just being my Makaya unit. Like, someone's gonna be my Makaya unit. <laughs> it's like this thing where it's like, because everyone can be this unit, everyone can be this unit, so no one can be this unit. It's like, no, that's stupid, because you're gonna be using units. You have to make a choice. You don't just get to use everyone. That's such an irrational argument. That's like this old school mentality of, oh, there's there's one speed wing in the game and someone's gotta get it. It's like, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not that's not what we're doing here. Like, who else needs Micaiah that bad? Like, the only other person I would probably run it on is Jean. Like, who else, like, I'm not gonna run it on a combat unit. I'm not gonna have a combat unit spend time healing. That doesn't make sense. They're going to get combat XP. <laughs> Alright, so she needs to get to an emblem energy. So I'm going to have Amber go here. She's going to heal She's gonna heal a dude while going to an emblem, emblem energy. It's very simple. And then I might have people attack unfavorably to get some damage. Like, I have to literally take damage on purpose right now. This is, <laughs> this is where I'm at in this game. <laughs> this is how my early... I have to optimize for healing people on purpose. Which is a very weird situation to be in. So I'm like trying to trade. She can just kill this. She's just like a nuke on wheels. She just flies up to people and kills them. She need Alright, so she needs this. Alright, now she can Great Sack. Potentially leveling up off of that. Or she can just AoE heal. Dang, dude, my units are too good. My two combat carries are too strong. But you're going to be using units in this game. And they're going to be dealing damage and they can they're going to need resources so you need to actually use things and that sounds stupid but like people will just assume that things happen for certain units but they don't happen for others and it's there's definitely like favoritism i don't think is that much of a thing in this game i think there's just investment in deciding who you're using i think it's a completely different thing i don't think that there's actual favoritism in this game in engage now, can you dump all your stat boosters into a dude? Sure, but like an engage ring, like early game, there's not competition for them. Middle game, there is to some degree. Kinda, kinda yes, kinda no. Late game, I don't think there's really competition for engage rings, there's so many. Like, I don't know what kind of team you're running where you have 
I don't know, eight plus units all competing for like hard carry engage rings. I feel like if that's the case, you're doing something wrong. This is how I view the early game. You have, you pick your units you want to bring with you and then the rest of them body block, set up kills maybe, stay out of the way. They just kind of go in a corner and just leave you, like leave you, your hard carries alone. <laughs> that's the way I do it at least. Silly here. All right, let's see. She's almost level 10. All right, let's check Great Sack first. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, that's good. She basically has a level up now. All right, so that's so this is just using the unit normally. Like, this is using a Makaya. I'm showing right now. I'm showing the work, right? I I don't like when people just like make arguments and they're out of context or they don't show like what's actually happening. I'm showing the proof that it's this easy to get Anna online and that can even heal her. Actually, she can heal herself with the one thing, so she shouldn't be getting healed. If someone takes damage, she can heal them plus herself and then hit level 10. And she contributed, she was a Micaiah user. Sure, anyone can use Micaiah, but you can only bring so many units with you. Perfect, this should be a level up here. All right, now she's level 10. Great. <laughs> that was so difficult. <laughs> just, setting, just having her heal things. <laughs> Honestly, the thing that made it hard was my team was too good and we taking no damage. That actually kind of made it difficult. Like my team was like overachieving. Okay, so we got her to level 10. Now what? So we're pre chapter nine and I threw leaf on her, which is not a highly contested emblem at all, especially for chapter nine and 10. So this gives her build plus four, which allows her to wield this without speed reduction. I got her sword power two. Now I know what you're saying. Oh my God, that's favoritism. How dare you use well resources? Well, Chloe also got Lance power two and Alir is probably going to get, um, I don't know, sword power. Actually, no, this Alir is supposed to be utility this run. This Alir is going to be a Byleth dancer that sometimes attacks, so they don't even need sword power. But I did get sword agility three, which I think is kind of expensive. So Alir, so these are like the three carry units, and then Fram, she has a thousand SP. She's probably going to avoid plus. And what I would do now, so fourteen speed, no reduction, or maybe one reduction. So what I would do is I would order a meal. Uh, I would cook for Fram and Anna because that's going to be my bonded shield and bonded target. And I would find at least a speed plus one. In this case, is a speed plus two. So we're going to try to cook this. Um, <laughs> extra ingredient milk, whatever. We just need this to work. This is to get her to double through, like everything on the next map too. And then you can use a speed tonic and then boom, she doubles every single thing on the next map. Immediately. Here we go. All right, let's see. Speed plus two. Nice. All right, if Brodian also magic plus one. I don't know if, I think Anna is Fierne, isn't she? She might be Brodian. All right, so now she's speed plus two. So currently, this is just for this next chapter, just to get her speed up so that she can double everything. So that if you want her to just be like a one round god like Chloe, she can do that. So let's just get her a speed booster. This, like, I, I never run tonics, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so this is just for this chapter. Speed tonic, buy it, great. All right, and then we can just go to the next chapter. All right, let's see where she's at. Uh, so we'll let these enemies come to us. Usually, you can use tonics ahead of time, but let's use it now. All right, so so you can you can cook and you can tonic her to plus three to four speed just for this chapter. Oh, I don't get the extra bonus because it doesn't stack with cooking. All right, my bad. I don't I don't I literally never use cooking for bonuses on purpose. I just use it to build support, and I never use I don't ever use tonics in any of my runs. By the way, all right. So she's sixteen speed, so she can double most of the map now. The only thing she can't double are very fast. Now, if you didn't want to do that, you can still run Leaf on her to keep her on Leaven Sword, and she can just use Fire or Fire if you want something lighter until she gets more speed up so the weight of the Leaven Sword doesn't slow her down. But Sword Power before Pandreo, this is like a serious thing. Like, he can't get Sword Power until Chapter 20, because after Chapter 19, you get Roy back. So, like, only, the only units who can run Sword Power on Mage Knight are, like, Chloe, uh, Anna, and Citrine. And of those... Chloe and Anna are definitely better long-term, for sure. Citrine has very similar stats to Anna on Mage Knight, if they're both level 10. 
So it's debatable that she's even like better. And Anna just has better dex, like she has better dex growth, um, better speed growth. She gets 20% more speed. So all right, let's just see what kind of kind of results we have. Leaf, no one wants Leaf early. You get Leaf for two chapters, no one wants him. So I don't even want to hear that that's a contested emblem because I know that for a fact that no one wants Leaf. Leaf is the most uncontested emblem in the game. All right, so she doesn't double those. However, she's in, she has now entered one round city. You can't tell me this is a bad unit. All right. <laughs> she barely doesn't double these two. Now, obviously, very few things double flyers, but long term, you should probably just hand her Lin or at least Speed Taker. So you could just run Sword Power Speed Taker passive and she's set with tier four well. That's very achievable. Otherwise, you can throw Lin on her and she'll be good for the rest of the game. But yeah, look at this. She's already one rounding dudes. Uh, let's see. Can she tank these? I'm curious. Can you tank these? She can tank these. Interesting. I think she can actually solo these. Hold on, let's check this out. This is a bait. This is a level 10 Anna. Let's see what she's capable of. Let's move these units out of the way. Let's make sure no one gets attacked or killed. Let's see what she can do. So just the speed tonic. You don't have to do the meal. You can just do the speed tonic just for this map. Just for this map, maybe the next map. If you want her to double up most things. She'll double She'll double in one round armors, but on Leaf, she will double quite a bit in this early game. She might just be slightly too slow by like one or two points for a few chapters, like for chapters nine through 11 potentially, to double like the medium speed enemies. But once she gets to like middle game, she starts power leveling. So right now she's enemy phasing. <laughs> she got a kill and she enemy phased two enemies, setting up kills on them. <laughs> like, like how is this, this is, we're beyond babying at this point all right there's <laughs> we're at a point where she's actually like carrying <laughs> she's carrying a flank by herself and then she could do like positional tanking uh, like attack a dude all right so she has 14 res this mage hits for 19 she can tank that so she's gonna take like five from that and then 10 from the other she can tank that kills this That dude's not even going for him. <laughs> He's attacking Jean. How dare you? How dare you kill a child during this little video? Come on, Jade, you can survive. I don't think she can survive. All right, here we go. There's another kill. So she's doing pretty well. <laughs> and then Jade dies. <laughs> Poor Jade. She's the victim of my entire team sitting still for a few turns, just to prove that Anna is a good unit. Uh, and low investment. You put Makai on here, you heal, and then she's she's already doubling and one rounding. Like, <laughs> she's not. The only thing she's not doubling are things that are very fast. That's it. And then maybe this this guy as well. But 16 speed. I think she gets a speed point when she levels up. So she actually will start doubling these after she levels up. So. This notion that she's high investments, you know, you've seen it here first, it's, it's nonsense. And this isn't even just an Anna video. This is really a video about investments, right? And unit quality and how Engage allows you to basically build anyone into being really good or really relevant, but especially growth units like Anna, she's easily a top tier unit. And if you don't believe me, stick around for a minute. Welcome to the end game. This is where the strength of a build is tested. Enemies have the highest health, the highest defensive stats, and the highest speed. So if a build works in the end game, it's generally good. If it works well in the middle game, that's great. Anna's build does work well in the middle game. I don't really think that's an issue. Honestly, middle game build benchmarks are not hard to meet. Most units can perform well in the early and middle game. Uh, some people argue that at least one person was arguing with me that Anna being good in the end game doesn't matter because she's not good in the early or the middle game. And I kind of feel like the early, the earlier segment kind of disproves that. She can be immediately useful as a Makai user. She can be immediately useful as a Mage Knight with, you know, handing her leaf and giving her a speed tonic, which is like 150 gold. So 
<laughs> and, and once her speed gets going, it gets going. So like right now, here's her speed. Base 28 speed. Uh, she still has some weapon weight, but she has speed plus 3 to counteract it. And then she has uh, plus 5 speed from having Lin on her. So she's, uh, she's the Lin user, right? Uh, so what can she do? Well, she can one round pretty much this entire map. Like, nothing nothing that attacks her lives if she can counterattack. And she can even one round <laughs> these archers. She might be able to... She has 64. She might be able to one round this. 64. I think she can. I think she can one round that. <laughs> Hold on, do I have a warp? Here, let me warp her. Let's see. Does she one round those things? If she does, that's amazing. <laughs> Like, there's a reason why people say she's a good unit. It's not like people just like her, right? She does. She one-rounds this. She one-rounds literally everything on the map. Maybe the bosses. Look at this. This is insane. You can't tell me this is a bad unit. She's like, she's so consistent. Um, and then, alright, what else? I think she does one-round him, even. 35 res. Yeah, 43 health. She one-rounds him. She just needs to get one speed taker, and then she's fast enough to one-round him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 because she would do at least 20-something. So, like, this is a good result, right? She went around this. She almost won rounds this. She just doesn't double that. It's just a little bit too fast for her. Yeah, let's check out that thing's speed. 34 speed. So that's a very fast enemy. No one on my team doubles that. Like, literally no one on my team doubles that. So that's, that's fine. Uh, but let's say you need, like, a proof. Like, aside from showing that, obviously, she can one round everything on the map... Maybe that's not good enough. Maybe you need a demonstration. So I'll give you one. I'll give you a demonstration of power. Oh, you also get plus three speed from Chaos Style. As well. Alright, and so <laughs> 500 gold proc. She also makes you... Not to mention she's one of the best combat units in the game. <laughs> but she also makes you money. <laughs> which no one else does that. Alright, that's a unique thing that only she does. So, like, even if you just, like, let's say you consider her and Citrine even. Citrine doesn't make you cash, right? She's she's the, the, the supposedly wealthy character noble who's, like, rich, but Citrine makes you no money. Anna makes you cash. I just made I just made 500 gold from attacking a dude. Citrine can do that. And especially if you plan on using her as your combat hard carry, she can make you thousands of gold. Like, if she makes you 1 to 2k a map and you do 10 maps... It adds up. That's 10 to 20k. That's upgrades, that's weapons, that's resources. Alright, so here's the demonstration. This is why Anna and Fram are really good early game units. They scale well from early to mid to late game. Look, 1k made. Those enemies don't drop gold. They do when Anna kills them sometimes. So we made 1k. She's trivializing the center with Fram. She just got magic and speed. <laughs> now that's what I call a return on investment. <laughs> This is the demonstration of power. Maybe we make 1.5k, who knows. Her luck's not- I don't even have luck passives on her, by the way. She just made me 1k just from killing some dudes in general. But this- this particular build, both of these power level each other, and they can hold down an entire front. Look at she made 1.5k, dude! Look, do I make- do I get two? Come on, give me 2k. No, I didn't get two. All right, that's fine. I mean, 1.5k from killing seven enemies. You can't tell me that's not good. That's so useful and relevant. Like, and then she can also solo these eight enemies up here. Well, duo, I should say. Her luck right now, what is it even? It's just 22. So one in five enemies. So zero luck investment. One in five enemies gives you 500 gold. So I made 1.5k <laughs> from killing dudes. All right, so I can go. You want to? You want all of them to hit you? Why aren't they attacking Fram? Her void is too high. If you're wondering, uh, void stacking plus the dual support—that's that, the reason. All right, you can kill this. Let's kill. Let's get rid of these guys. And then this guy. No one doubles this thing. Some enemies are too fast, right? So now, if, with speed takers, that's when you can double these guys, but. So my speed takers could double this once they get their speed high enough, but no one's doubling that at base. No one has like 40 plus, no one has like 39 speed by this point, unless you've done something crazy, right? It's just not happening. <laughs> We're gonna sandstorm for 47 there. You'll love to see it. All right. 
Here we go. Here's the demonstration. So she's made me 1.5k and she's trivializing this map. Which is good. This is maddening, obviously. I only play on maddening. Maybe she can make 2k. Let's see. She showed in theory, based on the percentages. 2k made. Okay, nice. Find me another unit that makes you money. <laughs> see how much let's see if she gets the three she could i might just get to two or 2.5 though this also works on void curse enemies by the way her passive triggers on void curse enemies so you can still milk them for something in infinite farm if you want i don't do it but you can do it if you want come on give me 2.5 nice dude 2.5 k <laughs> K. Jesus Christ. Can I get 3.5? That'd be super good at luck, but... 3K. She made me 3,000 gold and trivialized this map. If, if that's not proof enough, I don't know what to tell you. If this is not convincing, <laughs> then I don't know what else I can do at this point. If this, if this result is not convincing... <laughs> like... This isn't even my best unit. This is just one of my hard carries. Chloe is equally as good. Tamara is equally as good. Uh, this Alir is pretty strong as well with sword power. Like a lot of these units can one round. All of these units are equally invested in. This is just one of my hard carries, by the way. This isn't like I dumped literally everything into her. Look at, look at everyone else's passive. Lance power, speed plus five, lance power five. Speed plus five, sword power four. Uh, speed taker, lance power five. Axe power 5, speed plus 5. Like, everyone has good stuff. No one has junk. No one is... Everyone has forged weapons. Everyone has engravings. This is how you should be playing the game, in my opinion. If you're just, like, playing... Like, if you're not doing LTC, which obviously changes everything. Or some kind of weird rule set. Um, but you should you should have god units that just, like, destroy everything. And, and if you, you don't... I mean, if you want to evenly invest in people and play that way, that's fine. But you're going to have to overcalculate a lot of positions. So it really just depends on what you want out of the game. But even if you just use her as a mage knight as like one of eight combat units with like sword power two uh, and like speed plus five, that's or even speed plus three, that's probably enough for her to be relevant and to, to pop off. She does need like some kind of good, every, everyone needs like a good thing. So like she has Lin in this case. The Lin is just to get her to like 40 speed. Like look at her avoid right now. Her avoid gets insanely high and she can actually start dodge tanking off of it because of the speed. So. This doubles as like an avoid tank build, and when bonded shield is out, sometimes I can just chain guard, and she just keeps dodging, and then the chain guard's there as like a safety net. So you have options, but every unit that you plan on using that you want to be a good unit needs resources, and that's this seven man team, outside of him, who I usually don't run, because he's forced to play. Uh, everyone has the same resources, so I evenly distribute my resources to my hard carries, and then my hard carries pop off and put in work for me. That's how I view the game. That's how I play the game. And Anna is a solid unit. She's just one of many units that with the right level of investment and the right tactics can be made into being insane hard carry. Um, now other units could do this thing on Mage Knight. Chloe could do this. Pandreo could do this. But those are S tier units. So like if we're calling those S units S tier, but then this is not. Like honestly, I think I over emphasized the level of investment required to get her online in my tier list i do think she is s tier i think it's i think it's fair to say anna's s tier because with minimal investment you throw an emblem ring on her for two chapters and then she hits level 10. like that's that's the investment she you use her as a healer like that's it's it's not like i'm babying i'm not playing differently i'm not going out of my way to set up opportunities for her specifically so that she can hit level 10. like if i'm min maxing my units like, when I'm min-maxing Chloe, I make sure she gets as many kills as humanly possible. When I'm min-maxing Alir, I make sure he gets as many kills as humanly possible. When I'm min-maxing Anna, if she's on Micaiah, I'm making sure she's healing as much as possible. I'm not setting up XP farms. I'm not slowing down the pace of the map on purpose to intentionally get XP for her. Like, when you use Pandreo, when you use Kigetsu, when you use Ivy, when you use units people typically rate as S tier, you still have to feed them kills, you still have to make sure that they're optimally being min-maxed, and that does not change between units. So that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoy these types of videos. 
I kind of want to dispel the myths of like this overinvestment favoritism nonsense that only really makes sense when resources to give units are very limited, not in a game where the game hands you an abundance of resources and you choose who gets what. There's a, a huge difference. You choose what to allocate, where to allocate resources more so than are restricted by the lack of resources. Uh, but yeah, definitely like and subscribe. Feel free to become a channel member. I live stream Monday through Friday, and I'll see you next one.